Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Arjun Chaudhary. Here are the top stories are tracking for you on Monday, the 14th of March. Baloch leaders express concerns over US F-16 jet sale to Pakistan. Forensic team examines computers of Bangladesh Bank after $80 million theft. And exiled Kashmiri leader accuses Pakistan of training terrorists on its soil. And now for all the details. Asian economies led by India will be a major growth driver in the years to come, hopes the International Monetary Fund or IMF. The IMF chief, Christine Lagarde, said that India's reform policies and its scale of market could work in the country's favour to grow at the fastest rate in the world. A lot of hope is being pinned on India for driving global growth in the coming years, said IMF chief Christine Lagarde, who was in New Delhi recently to attend the IMF conference on advancing Asia. IMF was earlier largely dominated by developed economies, but with recent quota reforms, emerging market economies have got better say in the functioning of the Washington-based funding agency. It is clear to us that it is Asia where growth is originating. It is going to come from India in the years to come, said the IMF chief. Asia is a vibrant region with a large and growing population. The reform to transform that was mentioned by Prime Minister Narendra Modi is a clear sign that India is on the move using the backbone of digital innovation, she added. She also urged Asian nations to employ growth-friendly monetary and fiscal policies to counter challenges posed by a fragile global economy. Moving on. Exiled Baluch leaders and political activists have strongly condemned the sale of eight US-made fighter F-16 jets to Pakistan. They feel Islamabad could misuse these jets to eliminate innocent civilians in the restive Baluchistan province. Exiled Baluch political activists and human rights defenders have expressed their discontent over the United States Senate's decision on March 11 of rejecting the resolution blocking the proposed sale of eight F-16 fighter aircrafts to Pakistan. While holding a side event titled Faces of Oppression, Human Rights Violations in Balochistan during the ongoing session of Human Rights Council in Geneva, Baloch leaders called March 11 a black day. The leaders said that Pakistan government could use the fighter aircrafts to suppress their fight for sovereignty instead of utilizing them to fight terrorism. I absolutely condemn the sale of any arms and ammunition to the government of Pakistan and to the Pakistani military, but especially the F-16s with the mountainous capabilities because they are purely used against the Baloch populations. And we have seen that in the past, so it's a sad day and a black day in our history that more uh, weapons of destruction have been sold to the Pakistani military which are going to potentially be used on the Baluch. It's really unbelievable after all uh, the detailed reports, for instance, from the Human Rights Commission uh, of Pakistan uh, on the extensive use of the F-16s in bombarding civilian population in Baluchistan that the United States decided to supply more F-16 to Pakistan. This is absolutely unbelievable. For years, the Pakistan military and spy agencies have been involved in extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances of political activists and other civilians in the restive region of Balochistan. Exalt political activists allege that over 18,000 people of Balochistan have been missing and a large number of mutilated dead bodies of Baloch people have been recovered. News from Bangladesh. Unknown hackers installed a malware in the Bangladesh Central Bank's computer systems before swiping $80 million, suspect investigators. The hackers watched, probably for weeks, how to go about withdrawing money from its US account. A forensic team of international IT experts is now examining all computers of Bangladesh Bank and will hand its report by the next two weeks, detailing how the fraudulence took place and if any bank officials were involved. The malware was used to steal information on the night of 4th February. 
following which a total of 35 transfer orders to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York were made where the Bangladesh Bank had an account. A spelling mistake in the online bank transfer instruction prevented the hackers from pilfering nearly $1 billion. But the hackers managed to get away with about $80 million. Taliban group in Afghanistan cannot but join the peace process. Political analysts have said this comes after the insurgent outfit rejected to join the peace talks with the Afghan government which was supposed to take place this month. Political analysts have called on Taliban outfit to join the Afghan peace process to end prolonged political crisis in the war-torn country. This comes after the Islamist extremist group rejected the offer of a resumption of peace talks, saying no talks would deliver progress unless and until the foreign occupation of Afghanistan is over, the name of Taliban leaders are deleted from a blacklist and Taliban detainees are free. All these three conditions are supposed to be done through the peace process dialogue, not as a condition ahead of the peace process. That does not make sense. Anything that the, all four sides, they are agree on the peace process, then it should be implementable. The Quadrilateral Coordination Group, namely Afghanistan, Pakistan, United States and China, has held a series of meetings to chalk out structure for resumption of peace process. Many feel this can pressurize Taliban to join the negotiation table. They act jointly. I don't think the Taliban has any other choices except to come to the peace negotiation table. Afghanistan has for long been ravaged by Taliban violence. The group has been fighting to topple the US-backed unity government of Afghanistan and install a hardline regime. Exile leader from Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan, Shaukit Ali Kashmiri, has expressed serious concern over terrorists getting a safe haven in Pakistan. A report. Pakistan is providing shelter to terrorists who are using its territory as a launching pad for radicals and extremists, exiled Kashmiri leader Shaukat Ali Kashmiri said. Speaking at Geneva on the sidelines of the ongoing 31st session of the UN Human Rights Council, he added that many of the terrorists are getting facilities and are roaming freely in the country. Pakistan had recently admitted of hosting Taliban leaders on its soil and providing medical facilities to them and their families there. Pakistan war against terrorism. लेकिन दूसरी तरफ जो है वो हम देखते हैं कि लश्कर ए तैयबा के लोग दंदनाते हुए फिर रहे हैं एक्सट्रीमिस्ट जो है वो रोजाना रैलियां निकालते हैं जैश मोहम्मद जो है वो ऑपरेट कर रही है जिहाद काउंसिल जिसने अभी पठानकोट के वाकए को जो है वो एक्सेप्ट किया है तो वो ये सारे लोग जो है वो स्टेट बेनिफिटेड हैं स्टेट की जो है वो होस्ट हैं ऐसे ही जैसे कि तालिबान के कुछ लीडर्स हैं जिनके बारे में खुद गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान ने एडमिट किया है कश्मीरी एडेड दैट द पाकिस्तान गवर्नमेंट कैन नॉट फाइट टेररिज्म बाय अडॉप्टिंग अ पिक एंड चूज पॉलिसी ही आल्सो रेस्ड कंसर्न ओवर रीजंस लाइक पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्टर्ड कश्मीर एंड गिलगित बल्तिस्तान ग्रेजुअली बिकमिंग अ ब्रीडिंग ग्राउंड फॉर टेररिस्ट्स हमारे उस रीजन के अंदर अभी भी जो टेररिस्ट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है वो इंटैक्ट है और आजाद कश्मीर को हम बार बार कहते हैं कि एज लॉन्चिंग पैड फॉर द टेररिस्ट एक्टिविटीज यूज किया जा रहा है मैं ये कहता हूं कि टेररिस्ट जो है वो कश्मीर को ना तो आजाद करवा सकते हैं क्योंकि उनका आजादी का दे 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 वो वो तो कहते हैं हम अल्लाह के लिए लड़ रहे हैं हम इस्लाम के लिए लड़ रहे हैं हम पाकिस्तान के लिए लड़ रहे हैं Even though Pakistan claims to be taking action against extremism in the country, many reports over the past years have emerged of terrorists getting trained in terror camps in regions like Pakistan-administered Kashmir, Gilgit-Baltistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Moving on, education is not often accessible for children in slum areas. But an architect from the Netherlands has come up with an innovative idea. to impart education to slum children in Bangladesh on floating containers. A report. A Dutch water studio architect has come up with a high-tech floating school intended to educate children in Bangladesh shanty towns. The floating city apps built from a freight container was opened to Dutch children before being sent to Bangladesh. 
The container rests on a wooden structure supported by metal nets containing thousands of recyclable pet bottles that allow it to float, making it ready to use in remote and poor areas. And this is a floating city app. And the floating city app is like a, like a school in a container. And we use it to upgrade slums worldwide. So we bring it to slums in, for instance, Bangladesh, on the water. And we bring it on this, this platform of pet bottles and it floats and can instantly upgrade life over there. The floating app is bound for Bangladesh's slums soon and is expected to be installed before the summer time. Uh, I feel excited, uh, but let me ask you these questions. Have you seen anything like this before? So, anything new, anything innovative, and more importantly, which is going to be used by some poorest of the poor, uh, small kids who, have, who may not have seen what internet is, computer is. This is only the first floating container developed by the studio. But they say others can contain sanitation equipment and food, depending on the needs on the ground. According to the United Nations Development Program, at least one-third of the world's population lives in slums or squatter settlements. People from around the world cutting across all faiths were drawn together through common beliefs of harmony and brotherhood. In what was one of the biggest cultural congregations, leaders and artists spread the message of peace and tolerance. The banks of Yamuna River in Indian capital New Delhi turned into monumental cultural rendezvous ground, playing host to one of the biggest gatherings. The Art of Living Foundation, headed by spiritual guru Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, commemorated 35 years of service to humanity through World Cultural Festival. 3.5 million people, 33,000 artists and 155 countries participated in the three-day rhapsodic event under the theme of One World, One Family. Several dignitaries, including former French Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin, Nepalese Deputy Prime Minister Kamal Thapa, Karu Jai Surya, Speaker of Sri Lankan Parliament, and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi graced the occasion. Antarashtriya Samando mein soft power ek bahut badi ahem bhoomi ka aada karta hai. Dunia sirap aarthik hito se hi judi hui aisa nahi hai. दुनिया मानवीय मूल्यों से भी जुड़ सकती है और जोड़ा जा सकता है और जोड़ना चाहिए भी। After the successful gala event, the Art of Living Foundation has received invitation from countries like Australia and Mexico to host the next World Cultural Festival. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Baloch leaders express concerns over US F-16 jet sales to Pakistan. Forensic team examines computers of Bangladesh Bank after $80 million theft. And exiled Kashmiri leader accuses Pakistan of training terrorists on its soil. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.